The term running hacks is one of the worst things for runners to search for online. It takes our focus off the main thing that will get us to our goals, setting up a good training plan and following that training day in and day out. But what if there were some scientifically proven ways to alter our training plans that go completely against what we've all been told for decades and just by the nature of making these changes you can have the effect of a hack and make the training you do so much more effective. We spent a couple of days combing through studies to find the things that you can completely control that will make a big difference in your run speed that are almost the exact opposite of what run coaches have been saying is true for years. So beginner runners will be able to get started off on the right foot, while experienced runners might unlearn some bad running habits. What's up motivators, my name is Taryn. When ordinary people want to accomplish something extraordinary in endurance sports, they use motive training plans. You're ready? Let's do it. The first thing we've been told that's not wrong, but it's not the biggest opportunity for speed improvements, is that you need to increase your running cadence. We've done videos that we'll link to at the end of this video about how you can run faster with the same energy by increasing your run cadence by 3 to 8%. But the thing is, it's not the biggest opportunity for speed gains. This study found that a much bigger improvement in run speed happens by increasing the amount of force you push off with over every foot strike. Running is like a bunch of horizontal little hops in a row. If we take bigger, more forceful hops, you'll travel further and run faster. The hard part is how do you do this without getting tired? Well, this study found out exactly how. Athletes who ran mostly on trails were much more forceful with their legs, even though they strength trained less. They were just simply more powerful runners, largely due to the amount of trail running that they did. So what we do in our run and triathlon training plans is we encourage athletes to perform almost all of their long runs on trails and hills while running by heart rate and not pace. Athletes will be able to run at the right intensity level when using heart rate, and by doing the run on hills, they'll develop a lot more power. So yes, you can certainly work to increase your run cadence, but if you really want to make improvements, go chew on some hills for breakfast. The second thing that we've been hearing for years is that the best way to have fast running races was to do a negative split where you run the second half of the race faster than the first half. You'd try to get faster as you went. Well, we now know that this is pure malarkey. One study looking at the very best finish times in the world found that those times were done holding a close to steady pace with a positive split where the runners got slower in the second half of the race. And in a study looking at triathletes, they found the exact same thing, that athletes went out fast and then slightly slowed down as the race went on. Generally, this study found that the best pacing strategy is one that is as close to even from start to finish as you can get, and that the key to having a good race is to pick a pace that is correct for you before the race even starts. So what we do on our training plans is we have a lot of run where we get athletes to run at or slightly above race effort. And we provide them with a range of what race effort should be based on pace. And when athletes have race effort intentionally a little bit vague and their job is to figure out what is an appropriate sensation for race effort through workout after workout, they're able to get two things that are deadly assets to have on race day. First, they have a rough idea of what their best possible pace is before the race starts. Second, they know what race pace should feel like so that they can fine tune what they're going to be able to nail on race day once they get through the first couple of miles. The third thing that can make you faster isn't so much a thing that we've been told as much as something that we haven't been told. Run coaches have often said not to bounce up and down much while you're running but they never said how to fix it if you are bouncing up and down. Researchers looked at a bunch of aspects of running technique to see what were the key drivers of speed. They found that the number one biggest thing that determined if people ran fast or slow was a high amount of up and down movement in the pelvis. Fast runners would run with a much more level pelvis without collapsing into their pelvis losing energy with every foot strike. To fix this, first, you need to be more aware of keeping your pelvis level. But second, you need to have a core that's strong enough to stay level when it gets tired. The problem with fixing this is that a lot of run coaches have always had their athletes do strength movements that are very traditional, like squats, deadlifts, and lunges. Those movements themselves aren't bad, but when these movements are done in a locked off position, they don't teach you how to stabilize your core under a very dynamic and twisting load. 
We love to use kettlebells in our strength workouts in our app because the weight is off center from where you grab the kettlebell, so that weight wants to twist you over to one side. We also do a lot of kettlebell strength movements where the athlete has to stabilize themselves while moving. So you can learn how to stabilize yourself under a changing dynamic load, just like when you're running. The key to performing well in your running and triathlon events isn't a bunch of hacks. It's a proper training plan that gets you ready to race. But as we've shown here, there are some ways that you can make your training plan much more effective than if you just went out and ran without using these, uh, let's call them tricks and not hacks that make the workouts so much more impactful than if you didn't use them. Thank you for watching. Make sure to hit the subscribe button if you want to get more weekly training tips designed specifically to help ordinary people accomplish something extraordinary in endurance sports. Hit the notification bell to not miss out on these videos when they come out. And finally, click the video on the screen if you want to dive into running with a slightly higher cadence, which is one of our most popular videos because it's an easy way to run a little bit faster while using the same energy. This video will teach you how. Later, motivator. You're ready.